I was just watching the rest, the the, the final moments of the Tidy Tuesday. Yeah, oh, I didn't yeah. actually, I didn't actually do it, but I watched the whole thing. Yeah. I think I'm in love. It's amazing. Love. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. so good. It's more like, um, yeah, just looking at it, it gives you like kind of, you know, you know, courage and, you know, yeah, yes. just watching yes. it. Is, yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, if I practice eight hours a day for six years, <laughs> I can do that. Because that's what he said, right? Because someone asked him on the chat. It's like, okay. how did you get so good? And he's like, you know, just practicing. He's like, I work with R like eight hours a day now for six years. <laughs> so wow. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we are not using it like, you know, uh, to mm. just like to motivate, just watching maybe someday one can, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, because the code is there and you just need to copy and just practice as some way. When we move further to the chapters, mm -hmm. we'll, you start, you know, going through them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, he had some interesting tricks. It's always, I forget. Yeah, but, that's um, what I mean. Yes. I always, that's yes, the yes. tricks. Looking, watching him, you will mm -hmm. find some tricks that you can apply yeah. to your day to day. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, exactly. Or even just how he works around the art studio, you know what I mean? There's a, yeah. certain things, yeah. So, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm glad you suggested it, Champ, because I, it's sort of like, I, you know, I, we've been through this cohort before. Um, or at least I did. Um, but yeah. I never did the Tidy Tuesday. And now I'm thinking, like, I should have done it. Yeah, I should have, you know, looked at it yeah. earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, welcome to... Um, our book club are for the years. Today, we're going to look at chapter three, which is basically called data transformation. And three the or four? Oh, four, right? Four, chapter four. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Chapter four. And the basically, the main objectives for this chapter is for us to look at some of the widely used, you know, data transformations, um, you know, verbs from tidyverse, um, which we'll see filter, which we'll see arrange, we'll see select, muted, group, and summarize. Um, finally, we'll see this. So um, I believe we all, um, you know, um, know, um, you know, we install tidyverse. Um, you know, this is, if you don't, uh, basically I'm following through the uh, book, um, you know, um, summary, um, which we all have access. Now today we will see we'll use the um, you know uh, the all these function I mean all these verbs they are available from what we call deployer right so deployer is one of the you know verbs in you know uh, uh, tidy verbs um, one of the that it contains a lot of other things that you can do for data manipulation but uh, for the first thing we need to you know. Uh, define what kind of data are we going to use so there is this data called uh, nyc flights 13 which is a data set that contain um you know information about uh flight that depart from new york city in this very year and now if you don't have the data we can run this but we already have the data we don't need to run this and we can load the data, right? So load the library NYC this, and after the installation, so after we load the data, now we will be able to see the data here, right? So here when we call, because when we load this data, um, what we need to do is just to call flights. Um, so flight is the name of the data set. Um, if you look at this, you see we have uh, many data, 19 columns, and you know, this number of rows, right? So you can look at it up, we have a lot of other stuff. Um, so um, you may know, you may be able to see, okay, we have this data. You may you may want to see like um, some information of the data. Um, yeah, we can use view, right? So view allow us to see, you know, different columns, you know, um, you know, so this is much better than looking at it in, you know, our studio. So view allows you to look up the data, move and through, look, um, look, I mean, look a lot of about the information so you can see like here you can you know do this you can do the you can you know it takes from the last two you know you can just move around and look up the data so um now we have just observe observe our data you can also use this question mark this way and um, this allows you to you know 
see more information about the data. So you can see now somebody wanna say, okay, now I have this data, right? Um, I do have year, month, date, departure time. I don't know what they mean, right? right? Um, the best way for you to know different kind of, you know, variable or, you know, information is to use some playlist. Yes. Yes. I, I just want to ask before you go further, this data, like different data sets, where do they get it from? And how do you just see all of them at once and say, I want to determine which one is a suitable example for my situation? Like where's right. the data pool? Where's the data pool? Yes, so, a good question. So, um, you know, this book comes with this data already, but this data, um, so for you now, if you are doing research, for your research, you can curate data set. And data set depend on your field. So this data set had been created by professional, I believe, from uh, this industry about the flight data for uh, for all the flight that uh, that uh, left um, departed New York City. So they have the time that flight arrives, the time you know leave, the time comes, the delay. You know, uh, I'm because asking where I'm asking where all the because I've seen many kinds of data. I've seen uh, meta empty cars. I've seen other kinds of data. I'm always asking, where is the source of where they stored all the data in R? Like ah, what? in R. Mm. Oh, is there a place so, where you got? How would I know if I'm a new first person? How would I know what is NYC flight? Like I would never know if you didn't bring it as an example. Where is the source of this data? All of these empty cars, NYC flight. Where are they coming ah. from? Is okay. There... Okay. So this is it. Each and every package, um, if you want to explain, show something, you can come with predefined data. So okay. this package, um, um, what do you call it, Tidyverse, has a predefined data that comes with it. So um, okay. I think, yes, let me share something. Yeah, let me see something. Maybe we can see um, something from here. Sorry. Um, Deploy. Let me share my screen again. Uh, okay. Um. Sorry about that. Hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. Can you see my, yep, right? Okay. So, um, so for example, this is a deployer and you can see this is it. So I think uh, maybe when we come here, uh, range, so. Okay, let me go data. So for example here, um, you can see this is, uh, not this one here. Yes, you can see it. Um, you can can you see data? Yes, I can. Um, so well, excuse me, please let me. Okay. Um yes, can you see data? Yes, I can. So so when you install this package deployer. When you install this packet deploy, it comes bundled with sample data to do practice. This is a data band members. This is a data called Star Wars. This is a data called Storms. The other one, tidy bus. Oh, you cannot hear me. I can hear you. Okay. When you install tidy bus, for example, let's vote for tidy bus and see it again. Tidy bus. So let's see this. So when you go for, oh, okay, the tidy verse is a collection of all of these. Um, um, uh, I don't know which, it, and the data set that I was talking about in particular, which it is from. NYC flights. Yeah, I, I don't know which one it okay, is. Okay, okay. From which okay. one in particular, but what I'm trying to say, okay, let's go to ggplot2. Let's go to this data, uh, this library, ggplot2. So you can see this is ggplot2. So let's go to reference. So you can see these are basic function in that. 
and let's go down style you know position you know annotation aesthetic skills and so it may come with data set okay levels themes extended yes data can you see data mm -hmm. so you can see it has what is called diamonds right so this is a data set for diamond this can you see economic mpg yeah so this is mpg you are talking about yes yes so, so when you install this ggplot2 then it means you are installing this data set do you understand so this data set is somewhere else is somebody that created it, like you now you can say okay you created a data set for your research but somebody now when he develop a package he understand that your data may be useful while explaining his package now he can add this your data set in his package so anybody that install his package he also has access to your data i don't i don't know if that is helpful thank you, thank um, you. Uh, it, it has, yeah. okay. Sandra, you want to add something? I do. Um, so apparently there is also a function data. So Sham, can you type this into your console? Just data and then parentheses, parentheses, open parentheses, close parentheses. Okay. Um, data. Mm -hmm. Like this. Yeah. And then open parentheses, close parentheses. So like function. And that should bring up, you know, the preloaded data sets that are installed ah, in R. Okay. Yeah. You are absolutely right that the packages will also have their own data for you to play with. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's several locations. Yeah, so you can see here data set in packages, um, data sets. Um, so I think, um, you know, this is um, a package called, uh, I don't know, is this a package or maybe all the data set? I like think it's all the preloaded data sets in R. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You can see MPG here, right? Also, very awesome. Thank you so much, guys. Mm. Yeah. yeah. No problem. Yeah. Ask question. That's how we all, you know, you, I mean, you can see, Mary, I don't even know this function data. You can see I benefit from that. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, I didn't yeah, know either. I, I Googled it. <laughs> Oh, oh, you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this is how we all learn, right? So let's be, you know, um, uh, all um, have open, you know, uh, uh, feelings that there are no dumb conscience. Let's try it. So now, yeah, so as I told you, now when you install this, this data, temp, data set comes with the, you know, um, uh, package, and now you can play with it to under, do some kind of understanding. So, yeah, now when we have our data here, you can see we have this number shows you how many rows you have. So you have this number of rows. This number tells you how many number of columns you have, right? But you can find out if this is not feasible, you can do what is called N row flight because my data from here is called flight. So when I have this N row flight, this uh, literally tells you allow me to you know find out how many rows do i have you can see this is the number of row i have right so look at it you know what i mean um you can also basically um you know use not this if you want to find a number of column you would say you have you can see n column n call can you see that so when we run this guy um you know this tell us um you know we have 19 columns right so this is basically um uh telling us um what we have All right so you can see like we have 19 you know this stuff so this is it length so this one the n column and n and length give us the same thing so n column gives you how many columns you have length also give you but also the dim um what this dim means dimension so this is basically telling us um you know dim we give the data set flight here so this basically will tell us the dimension, both the row and column. Um, I think this it is maybe. Yes, yeah, so you can see you have this number of rows and you have this number of column. So that's about um, this stuff. And we have another function called call names. Uh, so sometimes, for example, here, you can see you have many number of columns, like 20, 50, you know what I mean? 
but you are just interested to see, okay, how, what are the columns names so that I can just pick the ones that I wanna work with, right? So if you need to do that, basically you can use this function called call names and give the data frames here. So we can see like it tells us how many columns you have, right? So you can- know. All right, this yes. function came mm -hmm. from this package and without loading the package, or is it base R? This um, function is right. I think call names is base R, I'm not sure. Yeah. All right, no, I just wanted to be sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just forgot like whether it is base R. I think it's base R call names, you can Google it. Um, right, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think, um, Sandra, do you know whether it's base R or tidy bus? I don't know, yeah. Yeah, um, but I'm guessing it's, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's uh, about that. So let's quickly move on to comparison and logical operators. So R has um, comparison operators and logical operators. So what we mean by comparison operators are this. So this is greater, this is greater than what you call to, this is less than, less than what you call to. These are called comparison operators because they compare two things, right? But we also have equal operators whereby we have equal to here and not equal to. So these are called, um, you know, um, logical, sorry, not equal to, logical operators. What do, why do we call them logical? In the sense that when I have two things here, um, I have, let me say, I have A is not equals to B then the answer is supposed to have is either true or false. If A is not equal to B, it tells me, if A is equal to B, I supposed to get an answer which is true or false. That's why they are called logical operators because the answer it gives you is gives you the logical, logical uh, result, right? But this one's um, basically called comparison operators, um, whereby if this is greater than this as well. So um, this is also, um, uh, um, um, something that we should know, like equality sign. In programming, we use this equality, and in for assignment, we use this. Is something that typically trip me up a lot of times. And <laughs> today, sometimes when I'm doing something, I forgot to do that. So this is something we should all we all know, I, I guess, right? Um, okay. Um, case matters. Uh, so this is something like they want to show us, like A and A in capital, they are different. So when you are doing some kind of comparison, don't assume that A is equals to A. So case matters in comparison. Um, we also have a function that if you have this kind of situation where you want to lower the case, so we have what you call to lower and to offer. And these functions are basically from, um, you know, deployer. So this allows you to, you know, case uh, lower case something. So when I run this guy, um, it shows me lower case. Can you see that? And also when I have this guy, um, I run this guy, it will show me here, uh, you know, um, capital A. So this is something we think um, basically. So if you want to do comparison, so base, uh, you know, convert them to equivalent and, you know, do some stuff like that. So that's, um, you know, something that basically um, a basic uh, stuff. And um, yeah, so this is something they, yeah, I keep talking about um, logical operators um, before. Um, so I don't know, like, uh, because this is existing now that someone prepared for this. So he ac actually started to, you know, explain what are these logical operators before he, we go on to uh, the nitty gritty about the chapter. But let me quickly finish. So I, I believe we all know this when we have true and true. And, and so we have what is called and, and, you know, uh, expression must be true. So if I have this is true and this true, the answer is to be true. But if I have at least one is false, then the answer will be false. Um, yeah, this is negation operator. Um, we all know if we negate true, it will give us false. If we negate false, it give us true. And yeah, compare object numbers. So we can compare object and numbers, meaning A is less than three. If it is not because A is one, I assign it one, then give me is true because A is less than three. Is A greater than three? This is false because A is one, right? Um, is A equal to three? Because A is equal to five, this is false. So this is something we compare object and numbers, but you can also compare objects. So here you can see A is one, B is five. A is less than B. A is less than B, no, that's give me, um, yeah, A is less than B is true, right? Um, A is greater than B is false. So this is some, um, uh, you know, a basic thing that uh, we should uh, be helpful when we come to do, um, you know, uh, this stuff. 
Uh, one thing you should know here is that you can combine operation. So A is greater than three and B is greater than three. So you can put and sign here and this will be uh, true only if this side is true and this side is true. Oh, this, um, this one means O. A is greater than three and B is greater than three. So if we look at this one, uh, what is the value of A? A is, um, A, A actually we know A is one and B is five, right? So in that case here, when we said um, A greater than three, this you can see is false. And yes. B is greater than three. Since B is greater than three is five, but one at least is false, then everything will be false. Um, what about this one O? So O means at least one is true. So A is greater than three, this is false. But B is greater than three, which is it means this statement will be true. This O means at least one of the operation, one of from the left and right hand side must be true. So this is true. So this is very useful when we come to do some stuff um, as we see uh, lately. Yeah, so anyone wants to add something or any questions, Sandra, Mary? Yeah, no, about the bar, the exclamation mark. I yes, okay. So yeah. Not so this, this one, not that one, the exclamation, like the one, next one. one. Oh, the this next one? one you would do, yeah. Ah, okay. So this one is negation. So what this means is that, um, so for example, um, what is, is A equals to B? Oh, okay, let me run. Okay, let me give this. A is equals to two and B is equals to three. And let me run this guy, it's false. Can you see like here I use um, equal sign for pi for R? It's also true, you can use this, but A is not equal to B, right? So A is, but when I negate this, it can turn it to true and I get the answer. So you can see it's true. So some situation you want to do negation. Um, yeah, so this is this and uh, so this is negation. So this one is negation. Um, yeah, so we'll see a lot of uh, uh, stuff. Yeah, um, Sandra, you wanna add something or Mary question before we move on? No, that's good. Okay, so let's go look at the first very useful um, function which is filter. So what filter does is basically um, giving you a data set, it allows you to filter some stuff. So let's look at our data set. We have already looked at this, you know, the number of rows, you know, column names, and, you know, let's look at this. Uh, let me um, look at this. Okay. So here you see, this is my uh, our flight data what happened. Yes, this is our flight data, right? And you can see here, we say, okay, how many columns do I have? You know, I have these columns, right? So here I can think of, okay, no, I want to filter this data where I have only the month is 11. So you can see I have month, month, year. So I want to filter the data for only November, November, right? Select right from November because this is month. So this month is like one, two, three based on them. So we can do what is called filter. So filter allow you to filter data based on particular columns in your data. So here you can see I say filter. I put the data names, which is this flight. And now select the column you want to filter with, which is month. And now where month equals, you can use the month equals 11. So when I run this guy, this will give me all the data where month is equals only 11. This is called, um, you know, uh, filter. Just filtering your data based on the column value. Um, we can also say filter the data based on where the month is equals to 12, and it will filter that. Um, maybe we want to filter all the data, but we don't want data from December, right? We don't want a data. Then I can say filter data month not equal to December. So this means that it will filter all the data from all the month except only for December. So Mary, this is the situation where you can do negation, example that we show. So in this situation, you negate um, 12, which is December. So when we run this guy, it will give us all the data, but without the, the one for December. But also you may say, okay, no, I don't need to have only data for one month. No, I wanna have data for November and December, right? So it means, and, right? So you can use this, um, 
um, you want to have um, data for November or December, two months. If the data is in November or it is in November, bring it. So you can see here, we can use this month is 11. Oh, this one means oh month is equals to 12. That is the essence of this, um, you know, this one. So you can see here, yeah, oh here. So you can, when we run this, so all our data will turn from for the month of 11 and month of 12. So that's why we have this um, month 11 and month 12. Um, yeah, we also have, you know, um, uh, uh, another one uh, here, we can say- well, And, do sorry? we have to now put, and we just put the and sign. Yeah, so this one- um, 11 see, months equals, equals to 11 and, I don't know if that's correct. Yeah, so- we we'll bring see. the two. No, so this one, what will happen is it will bring anywhere where the month is in November or the month is December. But you mm. want to may have something where the month is in November and the day is one. Meaning here, it must be all these conditions must be satisfied. That is the month of 11 December and the day that is a First day you want these two conditions must satisfy. This and and means all two conditions that you have must satisfy. So this one will return only where it is in November and first November. November uh, November and first November. So this will return will not return any data that is in November and it is in second November. Only the day that is first. I don't know if Mary, you understand the logic. Yes, it's it's clear now. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, but this one, return the data. You want to return all the month uh, data in month of uh, uh, eleven and also in November and all you know, but not yeah. So that's the difference between O and and. I, yeah. And this I think will be explained more in the next couple of chapters. I think as well. Yeah, so um, this and um, can be excluded, but when you provide comma here, um, R will, you know, assume you mean and in between. But if you want to use this O, you must put this O. But if you just exclude it, this means that uh, R will just assume you want to put and and they will have the same result. And so when you are doing this, diff layer do not actually solve, um, you know, change the result. So for here, when I do selection, diff layer does not store the result. So what you need to do when you do your filtering, you store your data in a new variable. So you can see here, I do my filtering. I say, okay, give me the data for um, month 11 and everything that is on that first day. And now save the result in November 1. Can you see November 1? Now, um, when I run this, um, you know, I can see like, um, where I run this, you can see like uh, I, when I save it, I find the number of rows in November one, which is, we can see 986, number of rows in the flight, the total flight, we can see this is the number of records we have. But when we find only data for month 11 in the November and first day, you can see we have only 986 records. Right? Um, any question, um, Mary? Um, not no. no. Okay, okay. Feel free to ask if you have question, please. Um, missing values. Um, so we have what is called missing value. What is the meaning of missing value in R? Um, so uh, in data set, sometimes in Excel you will see column or row. Um, I mean all value which is missing. There is nothing in, in it. In R, that missingness is represented with you know. NA. Yeah. So when you have your data and in your data you have a column or row with some kind of missing value, um, you will see NA. So what happens? So NA is somehow kind of you know infectious. Um, whatsoever you did you do with NA, it will give you NA. So when you have NA greater than five, it will give you NA. And it's 10 because NA it will give you NA. NA plus 10 will give you NA. NA divided by two NA. Everything you do with NA, it will return N with NA. Meaning, if I have a data and there is a row, 
with some Na in it, missing value. So when I try to find maybe the mean of that row, it will return Na because everything that you add Na in it, it infects everything to uh, make it Na. So it is quite useful when you are doing analysis to first check whether you have Na in it. So we use this is Na, right? So is NA, can you see that is true? Yeah, so when you have NA, you can drop um, you know, stuff with NA. Uh, so by default, um, you know, filter exclude S N, um, rows where you have NA. So let me explain what I mean. Um, what's this? Okay, this should be. Uh, okay. Oh, this guy is not showing any. So this is an example of table um, data frame. Here we create an example of table data frame. Um, maybe if you don't know table, we'll, uh, uh, it will be explained uh, later chapter, but just like kind of a container here for some values. You can okay. see here we have one. This is one here. We can see NA here, but I don't know why this is not showing any. And we can see three here. So we use this keyword table to create an um, example here. So what we are trying to see is that if you have a data and you do filtering, what happens is by default filter exclude NA values. It doesn't consider any NA. So let me assume like I want to find, um, you know, I want to filter where my X is greater than one. So you can see where N X is greater than one is only here, right? So when I do this, can you see filter? I put my data frame, I put, x which is the column is greater than one um what do you expect to be returned here mary uh, at the output i you... expect uh three but because any is there i don't know yeah. what will happen yeah so <laughs> look at it so you can see only three returns right so filter remove na automatically right okay. so yeah it removed any but sometimes you want to see like um uh you want to see your na, NA um so um um yeah, so here you can see like uh, uh, you want to say filter data from, um, but is any filter where is any? Can you see that? Fair filter yes. is any or where S is greater than one? You can see here it filter our any and X is greater than one, which is this. So this is something that, um, you know, uh, yeah, I, in your computer, NA here will show. Oh, let me see um, in source. Oh, you can see any here? Yes. So there, when we use visual, I think I'm not sure why the NA is not showing. All right. Um, good. So um, uh, let's I have, go. Yes, go I have a question. In that NA rule, probably if you want to do a mean of that. Yes, exactly. Know. Exactly. It's so that's, that's where the problem is. So if you want to do the mean, um, I think what is happening is like um, it return. Is it the zero or it? Um, I forgot. Like there was a problem, but uh, I remember. Um, if you want to return the mean, it will just return in NA, I guess, because you, you see, as I said, the NA is infectious. Um, let's see it. Let's just try it. I think. Um, uh, okay, where is our data? Okay, this is a data frame, right? So we can say like. Um, mean of d of and uh, x mean is yes, that what happened can you see it's any yes so here we are calculating the mean of these values can you get so that's why i would say like one should be very careful when you have a data set and you have like some na and you want to do your calculation and you don't know like you have like 1000 rows you don't know there is a single na in your 98 past 98 row and you're just doing your calculation you find the mean and you know you don't know somewhere else it gives you any and you are doing your calculation so it, so the good idea is like try to check whether there is no na in everything you know and everything is okay then you move on with uh experiment this is something very uh, oh, sorry how do you when you how do you check that there is any and then also when you check that there is any 
uh, how do you command it not to, or do, you, do you now say is dot any is true or false for it to recognize that there is any? Yeah, there? yeah. so we'll come to, you know, a lot of in the future, like how you can, you know, um, you know, so for example here, Um, you see here we have oh. what's happening? Where well, I cannot see the table. Okay. So yeah, sometimes the visual is weird, Shannon. Eh? Sometimes the visual doesn't properly run the chunks I've noticed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you can see here, I have, um, you know, uh, data frame, right? So um, we'll come maybe some way, um, sometimes, you know, um, I, I need to make sure my data does not contain any, right? So I can use what is called drop any. This is a function. So you can see it drop all any in my data. Okay. Okay. Um, Mary. Yeah. yeah, I just so thought, we'll come well, to this. you know, this we deal function. with large data sets, sorry, containing different, like this data has yes. 19 rules, I think columns, and then all those hundreds of thousands of rules. How do you tell it to, mm -hmm. you just come and you say drop NA on all 19 columns, and it should, how would you tell a big data set like that to drop NA and go ahead to calculate means? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the first thing is you don't need to drop. Um, you know, we have a lot of stuff dealing with NA. I think sometime in the chapter will be discussed. So there are mm -hmm. a lot of ways to deal with NA. So first thing is you need to observe your data, right? You need to, mm -hmm. you know, look at your data to see um, what, how your data looks like. Um, I think uh, in the, if we have time, I will show you something that allows you to, uh, you know, uh, observe your data even before you start doing anything with the data so that you know whether your data has um, a, a missing Indeed. value, whether whatsoever. So uh, there is something um, very, uh, you know, trick way, um, you know, using some kind of visualization that you can just call to give hmm. more details about your data. Okay. Yeah. Also, so I guess in this case, it's good, like if you're doing mathematical operations and you're mm -hmm. getting an NA, there must have been an NA somewhere, right? Because even one NA will return mm -hmm. an NA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, work. that's that's not, yeah, like with, like Sham said, you should always look at the data, um, which is usually what I do. Just, I, I don't know why. I always feel like no matter how big it is, I need to scroll through it. Um, but then at least if you're doing, yeah, some kind of like mean or standard deviation or whatnot, if there is an NA in the column, it's going to tell you because it will return NA. Um, so, thanks. Uh, yeah, no problem. I think um, there is something, uh, you know, I create a report. Um, there is something R. Okay, let me see. Um, uh, create a report. Um, data Explorer, I think, is it Data Explorer? Uh, okay, yeah, let me show you something. Uh, library Data Explorer, right? So, um, so anyway, today we are going slow, um, but I think it's good. Uh, Create report. Okay, anyway, let me run this guy uh, because this is a good discussion. So create. Create report, right? Can you see? Yeah, create report. So um, what is my data set? This large data, um, you know, uh, flight, right? So let me click this data flight. Um, when I go here, create reports. Now let me run this guy. So look at what is going on. Look at what is going on. So, um, what this package is doing is basically allows you to explore your data before you even start your analysis so that you will see like um what how many missing value you have you know in okay so can you see my browser 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Can see. So now when I run that thing on my data set, it create this um, you know, report. So you can see like how many rows do you have? How many columns do you have? Discrete columns, all missing columns. You can see no missing columns. Complete rows, total observation whatsoever. Now, discrete column, you have these, you know. I'm seeing missing observations. Where? Missing observations under all missing columns, after all missing columns. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see it. So that should be the NA now, right? Yes, 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 something like that. So you can see, um, but we don't have all missing columns, you know, missing observations. You can see missing observations 0.73%, which is this, as you can you see that. Um, you can see complete rows. So you can see it's not so because it's not complete rows, there is a missing continuous column. Um, you can see um, number of columns. How many do you have? You know, column names. Um, we have year, month, and you can see like the year is integer, month is integer, you know, delay is numeric, destination is character, origin is character. So this allows you to, you know, missing data profile. You can see here in all of this time hour, there is no missing value. But look at it in titanium, we have missing 0.75% of the titanium is missing. The, uh, this value, you know, we have, you know, percentage of missing in the data. You know, you can see even the distribution of the data wow. for each variable. Can you see mm -hmm. that? For each variable. So we can see like we can yes. understand our data, you know, bar chart. This is, you know, um, you know, for each, you know, QQ plot, you know, for all these variables. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy okay really? <laughs> just like that, that is analysis. <laughs> can you spell a single keep single line of command eh? a can single you keep line of command share? just give yeah me this. so you can see you can see principal can component you know, analysis own it and, uh, <laughs> eh? okay. i wonder how it chooses what to do it on and you know what it actually does with rows or columns that are missing values right so does it yeah, just get I mean, rid of it? Yeah. This is a package. It, it is doing crazy things at the back end, right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, so, so this allows you to quickly, you know, so what happened, the, the reason why I do this, um, you know, came across this package was basically, I do some, you know, um, data, I prepare the data and, uh, you know, I sent to my friends, you know, they uploaded the data, people started using the data, we organized something and somebody said, hey, there is some missing value on this and mm. it doesn't know. And you know, you do some mistake. I said, what the fuck? I don't right. have time. I don't have time after everything to go and you know check the data. What I say, there must be a solution for this. So I just, you know, Google. Mm -hmm. So whenever I finish my data and before I start doing my analysis or send to my friend, mm -hmm. I run this and now look at it. What is it? I just look at the summary. Everything is okay. Yes, yeah, okay. Then I just mm -hmm. uh, sorry, hold hold this there. When oh, please hold it, hold this there at the missing data profile. The missing data profile, where the red lines, yeah. So we are here. So with all this other data, these are variables that are having this large volumes of missing data. What does the system do? Does it like, you no, know, I know that in the statistics there's a way it tries to compute for that missing value. Like what, yeah. what does Arrow do to make up for the empty spaces, you know, that you didn't take data on? No, does I it mean, assign does it assign the, the value to read and continuous running analysis? Yeah, so uh, no, it depends on you. So there are different ways to deal with you know missing values. Whether you can calculate the mean and put the mean of all other, you know, there are different ways. So in fact, I mean, dealing with missing value is something different that um, you know need its own you know like that um, time. Yeah, no, that time. Yeah, yes. time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. So dealing with missing value is something also different that uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, but uh, one thing I know, like there is some situation whereby, for example, you can calculate the mean of every other and populate it. And, you know, there are a ton of them, you know. Okay. So I don't know if this makes sense, but we are really. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That's a, a good resource, Sam. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Thank you. So this is called, it's called Data Explorer. You can install it and, you know, create. so it has a lot of, you know, um, you know, uh, functionality, you can see the row columns, you know, if you want to drop, mm. uh, you may have also, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, yeah. <laughs> do scatter flow, you know, set missing value. So I can see this one, set all missing value to include values. Um, so Mary, Mary, you can see some function here. So set all missing values. So maybe they would, uh, yeah, do some stuff. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, 
Um, the next one we have arrange function, um, you know, which I basically arrange your data set. So um, what this means is um, we all know our data is basically this. Um, we have our data, which is this, and now we can do what is called arrange. So when we say arrange flight de um, departure delay, what this means is that it will arrange our data based on departure delay. So look at the data. This is departure delay, right? Departure delay is two, four, two, something like that. So when I run this, let's look at what will happen. So look at departure display, right? Now it arranges the data based on the row, but departure, it's using departure display to arrange. You can see departure display is start from the, you know, descending, right? Minus 43, minus 33, minus 20, you know, two, two. Can you see that? Up to the, you know, but you can also change this one to be in, um, you know, in uh, this order. Um, I say this so is that it can start from, you know, one or whatsoever. Let me run this guy again. No. Is it? Oh, descending. Yeah, something like that. What's happening? I'm wondering if uh, it should be a range flights, comma, depth delay, comma, descending equals true or false. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, this is it. We have it already here. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, interesting, okay. Uh, anyway, I don't know why this guy is not going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the, hmm. the the idea I was talking about is just like, you know, arrange, it arrange the data based on row, based on particular, you know, but it, by default it's doing in ascending order, but um, you can change it to descending order as I showed. And also you can do by multiple variable by putting them here and, you know, yeah, something like that. So that's basically arrange. Um, Mary, any question? Uh, no, but okay. the multiple variables I have mm -hmm. a problem. <laughs> so it will arrange by year and then also arrange. How will it be working on? Will it take the one that has the lowest value? I don't know how to do that when you have three variables together. Yeah. One of them maybe having a uh, character, the other one, I don't know, having uh, integer and all of the, maybe one is going from negative to, I don't know how to carry three variables at the same time. Yeah, that's a good question. So, um... I don't know why this guy. Um, let me run this. Um, so let me show you. Okay, so if you look at this one here, so we have this one we change to descending order. We can see here it start from positive, right? Yeah, departure delay, right? But now we say okay, we can do by you know um other one year, month, day, right? So look at the year, month, day. So it will make sure that look at this one, year, month. Uh, okay, let me do selection. Select, um, you know, yeah. Just for example, uh, um, no, year, month, just to show you, um, day. Oh, this, okay, maybe this guy will be better. So look at it here. So year of men, right? So 2013, yeah, it will be one, one, right? It will be one, one. So let's look at the uh, next couple. Oh, it will be, <laughs> you know, it, um, yeah, so look at this one here, 2013, one, it changes to two, right? Um, so it's, I, I don't know like to tell exactly how it does, but just looking at it, like it is just taking, you know, uh, this one first, the minimum, then the minimum, this one, then the minimum of this one. So you can okay. see here, okay. it, it started the minimum of the year is 2013, minimum of month is one, but the minimum of the day, one has finished. So it started taking two, you know, and it continued like that, yeah. Um, so 
I am looking at the book. Sorry, I don't know yes. where you see where I see this uh, aroma down in it. How do I get this aroma down? Ah, good question. So if you go to the book, um, we, um, what do you mean R markdown? Here, how we do this R markdown, right? How you are seeing this uh, summary, uh, they are this whole workbook. Sorry? The workbook, I don't know where you find, or you, or you did this yourself, you write this. Uh, ah, no, 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 no. So in the chat, um, you know, if you look at the, um, you know, uh, let me share the with book. you. Let me share, yeah. So this is the summary of the book. Um, this is it. Yes. Um, yeah, so this is a summary of the book. You can see that, that we are working on through. Um, but this is not the original book. You know what I mean? This is not the original book we have um, for the book club. Um, this is just summary. People that volunteer to present this chapter, they just write the summary of the... Okay, uh, um, uh, uh, this is not the book. Is that what you're saying? Because I have the book. I don't have the summary. This is a summary. This is a summary. Sorry, I have the book itself. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have the summary book. This one you asked, you said, is this one on, on the book club? This is the one on the book club, right? This is the, the one I'm showing you in my browser. On the book club. Yes. yes. The one I have in my browser is the book itself, the ebook. Uh -huh. Okay. Is it, so so is it different? Is it different? Yeah, it's just summary. Um, I share this in this in the in the chat. It just so uh, let me show you R for DS. So this is a book we are working on, right? Okay. Is it what you have? Okay. Is it the book you have? I have just seen this one you shared. The book, yes, I have the book. Yeah, yeah, this is the book. This is the book I have. So what we are saying is that each day for presentation, someone that is going to present, because I think you missed the first uh, session. Do you attend the first session? Yes, I did. But ah, okay. I think but this book actually what I was confused. Like I have a book called Out of Data Science, and okay. I'm now seeing this summarized uh, one. Yes. So I didn't so let me explain to you. So this is a book for R4 DS, the main book. But yes. for presentation, okay. any presenter has okay. a summary of the book that we go through. Okay. But fortunately, because this R book club has like eight session, eight book club that has passed. So they yes. have already have That's now been the curated. Yes, yes, curated. So I for me, I didn't even curate it. I just open it, just going through it. So okay, thank you. Thank yes. You. So you can so how can you get this book? You can, you know, GitHub repository, you can click here, git and clone it here. You can see clone. Can you see clone? And now you know how to do cloning, right? No. Okay, right. So, um, do you do you know how to use GitHub? Uh, just when I'm told to go and download stuff on it, I just okay. um... yeah. So when you okay. see like, if you want to have this summary, you can click here, and you can mm -hmm. click you know click copy, and now you can come to your R Studio, for example, and you can come to Terminal, and for example, when you come to Terminal. You can see, you know, after you set off your git, you can see git clone, and you uh, put this. So anyway, um, if you don't know how to use GitHub, um, I will share with you, um, you know, the videos for the book club, how to download the stuff. In our first session, that's the main first uh, purpose of the first session to show people uh, resources so that they can just learn um good enough to move on with how to use git. Um, yeah. But I will it's share okay. with you. Let me not disturb this. Yeah, no, no, no problem. Yes, no problem. Don't worry. No problem. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, unfortunately, today um, we are, um, it's already time that. <laughs> uh, okay. So we have another one select. Okay. Um, you know, select function. Okay, no, we see, see a range now. And the next one we're gonna see is called select. Yeah, select columns. So select basically select columns. So if you look, remember here, um, you know, we have our data set, which is basically, you know, um, when I have this, this is our data set flights. 
Can you see this is our data set flight? Now, maybe I wanna select only three columns. So what I can do is, um, um, this is something called five. Um, uh, Mary may not know this. I don't know if you know, but we will look at it. So you can do this select, and now you provide the name of the column you want to select. So here, for example, I want to select year. I want to select two columns, maybe month. I can provide month here, and now run this guy. So, mm. I don't know why it is saying. Anyway, um, no file for chat directed in this. I don't know what this guy is, um, what it is. Oh yeah. Even like this is giving me error. Okay, anyway, um, so um, Mary, what this means is that select, it's basically, um, you know, the first thing is your data and now the columns you want to select, which give us like three columns here. Um, you can use this format. So year, day, it means it select every other column that is between this dash. If you have 10 columns, um, you know, it means start from year and go end with day. This is something like it. And also you can, you know, um, you know, drop, deselect, use minus to select column except from the year today. So here it means deselect this. So flight, don't select these ones. Select everything, but then select what is from year to day. So for example, I can say, okay, um, you know, I have my data frame. I can say, okay, select, um, you know, I give my data flight. And now I can put, you know, maybe, um, you know, uh, year. So it means sell, remove, if I say negative year, it means remove the column year from, you know, deselect so yes. if you use negative it means deselect from the your data set so this is something i usually do if i want to remove one column from my data um instead uh to yeah if if i just want to remove a column i just put negative i use select i put negative uh, toward it and the that would be removed but you may have to save this object save it in yeah, object. yes yes exactly here everything is not safe so i need to point it to something new variable you know new data something like that so that's how it would save um without this it's not been saved thank yes. you mm -hmm. so um unfortunately i think um uh today we are uh anyway it's, uh, it's good but we are slow it's but good it's yeah good. <laughs> <laughs> we have not finished the chapter and it's already time so uh sandra what do you suggest <laughs> Mary? um are we about halfway through hmm <laughs> it looks like it, right? Uh, so, let me see what we got. It's still it's a lot more. Please let's not rush. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think Sandra, maybe we can, you know, uh continue next week, but we can very uh, be careful, maybe uh, I don't know, like um, I don't know why. Am I slow or what? Because I don't know why. No, I... you know, I'm I think not there's just slow. a lot of examples also. You are, like, uh, you are not slow. No, it's I. this is something we ran into, remember, uh, in, in the first book club where every yeah. session was stretching into two because some of these markdown notebooks have like every single possible example with you. Know, <laughs> every it's example. Good. Of <laughs> so, well, it's... it's it's good to some extent, but I feel like sometimes like there's no way that I remember all of them, you know, just going through this. Um, really, I think it's in the practice. And so um, I guess we can finish this chapter next week. Um, mm -hmm. Are you OK with us, Shan? Yeah, we can finish and we can, you know, move for fast in some ways. The more we move to the more chapters. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's also the, the thing is, if, if chapters start taking too long, then you lose momentum a little bit. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. And so, yeah. Um, you use what? You lose momentum. Like people start, you know, dropping out because this book Ooh. is long. So it's going to be like probably a year. And then if each chapter is taking two weeks, it stretches and stretches and stretches. So yeah that, so, that's just me but you know it also depends on i guess once we have was it yusuf and hamza back yeah so 
I guess like um maybe I'm slow. I don't know, but I let's... don't think so. But if you want to take another 30 minutes, I'm here. But I'm just saying you're yeah. not slow to me. Okay. Okay. So anyway, we can pause today and uh because I have other things also to okay, okay. Um, okay. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah, we can pause today and continue next week, and you know, we can do uh continue from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks a lot and have okay. a great yeah. Okay, Sandra. Right. Thank Thanks, Sandra. Yeah. No problem. Thanks, Sham. Yeah. Thank yeah. you all for joining and um yeah, right. um uh, see you next week and Sandra I'll, I'll definitely share another Tidy Tuesday just to watch um, so that you can get inspiration from that as well even if you don't practice just watch <laughs> yeah no 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 what? I think for the What's second that? one I'm actually going to set it up so uh, you know how there's a download so I've never done it so I, I want to set it up and try and work a little bit through it so mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, he was awesome yeah basically I will um, you know try to change from you know um, you know using the because the other one what i what i found out like the ones we um asked uh, towards last week um mm -hmm. basically had some functions that are deprecated in the sense that um because oh. it's no it's no latest so i would suggest us to start watch uh following the latest one so for example, one, yeah okay yeah because yeah for example the other one we saw that they are using a gather functions but now we have pivot longer and other stuff so it's better for yes. us to you practicing with what is latest. So what I would do is like I have you know practice for from Julia Silge for the last day before yesterday, um tidy Tuesday. So I will uh -huh. share it so that we can do something like that. So Mary, you were okay. not here last week. Mary, yes. what we did was basically there is what is called tidy Tuesday. Okay. Tidy, tidy Tuesday is just like um, you know, our community that the you know do practice on data visualization using R. So each Tuesday, they release a data set and people you know, uh, practice to understand the data and share on Twitter. But since we are learning here, we are don't have much capacity or much understanding you know, uh, to do, you know, do follow-up. But we said, okay, can we follow us, watch other people doing Tidy Tuesday? Because that's what is called screencast. They provide the code. They provide you know the video so you watch you can learn so you can even if you can replicate then fine so one day when we are replicating other people we are replicating then we will start following the tidy choosing because as they said you know uh um you know it's good to uh what does it say like um uh, it's good to learn from you know um, many people because even the way they you know do their uh programming with art you learn a lot from watching how they do programming so that's mm -hmm. what we yeah, but it's okay. Not, so when do you share these things? I, I yeah, want to put a timetable. Yeah, I will share also. Um, you know, so let me think. When um, do you normally share it? Like, um, at the moment we finish our this uh, study, I share it in the Slack. Okay, okay. Yes. Sham, did you say it's someone else or is it still that David Robinson guy? Ah, okay. It's Julia. So let me share this one. Um uh Julia, you know Julia Silge, right? Yes. So let me show you this, um, Julia. She also it. does screencasts or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like Julia. So yeah, so this is it. So you can see this is Julia Silge. Um, everybody, um, Mary, do you know Julia Silge? Um, Julia Silge, Mary? No, no. No? No. Okay, so Julia Silge is a data scientist at R Studio, and she's one of the you know uh, good people that uh, she wrote the book Tidy Text and yeah, and also um, Tidy Model. So you can see um, Sandra, you can see like October twenty, mm -hmm. you can wow. see one of her Tidy Tuesday. So if you go here, oh that's the newest one, right? Yeah, 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 newest one. So if you look I at it, this, okay. Hi, my name is Julia Silge, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. Today in this screencast, we are going to use this week's Tidy Tuesday data set about stranger things. So this is good. We've got 10, 40 words here because for mm -hmm. uh, for parameter, we don't, there's no. So you can see like how she does everything. So this week I will try to replicate what she does. You know what I mean? Just to understand. Yeah. But, 
but it's not um it's not for everyone um you know um if you are not fine um i mean it's, it's just like you know uh trying to see whether we can practice so that's the main idea so we can follow you know because this is the latest you can see tidy tuesday you know uh you know tidy so we just find her where we just find this tidy tuesday where where do we find it i will share in the i will share yeah um i think sham will share it in the slack yeah yes exactly okay yeah okay cool um okay um, thank you thank you uh, mary see you next week see you I'll see you tomorrow Shem. okay see you tomorrow bye bye thank bye. you hey don't don't lock yet i want to take this uh this site you said okay. here okay okay https uh yeah julia um julia okay thank you thank you bye, bye. bye.